Hi everyone, Dan Edmonds here, and this is a new third generation F-150 Raptor. The big difference for this generation is coil spring rear suspension, so I'm really interested to see how it does on my flex index ramp. As you know, I've already measured the Ram 1500 TRX, and it has coil rear suspension as well, so let's see how this one matches up. Now, I do want to say that this has the optional 37-inch wheel and tire package, which does force Ford engineers to restrict the suspension travel about an inch at each end to, uh, to prevent the tires from stuffing themselves too far up into the wheel wells. So that may uh, play a role here. And, you know, if I had my uh, suspicions, I think the one with 35-inch tires might do a little better in this test. But this is the one I have. This is the one a lot of people really want. So let's see how it does. Well, obviously we've got no problem with clearance as you'd expect, but it's worth pointing out that if this had been fitted with the standard 35 inch tires, the approach angle would have been almost identical to the Ram 1500 TRX, but because this has the optional 37s, it sits a little bit higher, about an inch, and that improves the approach angle here to be about three degrees better than the Ram 1500. Of course, that's measured in here at the skid plate. With the bumper angling this way, there's more clearance here and the approach angle is even higher right in front of the tire where the ramp is. All right, now's the time to place your... Crows. All right, now's the time to place your bets. Yeah, I went a little too far, so I'm going to have to dial this in, back up a little bit, figure out exactly where the point of lift is, but this is maybe an inch too far up the ramp. Since the tire's off the ground anyway, I figured why not take it off and have a really good look at that coil spring rear suspension. I mean, the truck's not going anywhere because I've got a really big wheel chalk under the other side. So why not? This is a five-link coil rear suspension. You can see two of them here, and they're really long. I measured the lower one. It's over three feet long from end to end. Wow. <laughs> the fifth link is a pan hard rod, obviously, between the left and right to keep the axle from moving sideways. Mounted pretty far inboard on this side, not as far on the other side, but I usually like to see them longer than this because the longer you can make your pan hard bar, the less left-right axle translation they'll be as the suspension moves up and down. But with a coil right here, this is probably the best they thought they could do. And if you notice, the bar itself is uh, squeezed down uh, in the middle so that it clears between the 37-inch spare and the differential housing. And of course, here's the coil spring. It's uh, about two feet long out of the truck, a little bit less than that right now at full droop. The uh, interesting thing about that is it's progressively wound, so when it's parked, these are pretty much in coil bind, and this is the working length. Uh, but right now, 
because this is in full droop, these coils are opened up. And, you know, when you land a jump, you'll get a little bit of a progressive change from soft to hard as that uh, compresses. The other thing that's interesting is this bracket here is bolted on to the axle tube. And what that means is an aftermarket suspension supplier might decide to produce a different lower spring mount with a different dimension to go with different springs to, to do a lift or, or whatever they want to do. Of course, here's the bump stop and it registers right on the axle tube. And one of the things that they do, because this has 37s, is restrict travel somewhat. So this housing here won't look quite as big on a uh, 35 inch uh, Raptor. And of course the Fox live valve internal bypass shocks. This is the remote reservoir and this is the live valve here that's electronically controlled. And over here we can see a height sensor. Other interesting things to note back here at the rear axle is this connector is where the electronic locking mechanism is triggered uh, through this, uh, this uh, connector and this wire. And then this is the breather tube and it goes quite a bit higher than the axle up to the bottom edge of the bed. Here's the breather tube here right up by the shock mount, which by the way is really beefy. Uh, here it is clipped to this other thing here and they've done whatever they can to get every last inch out of their fording depth by putting it up in a void that's even higher than the bottom of the bed itself. I'm calling it right here because I've got this piece of newsprint under here and I can't pull it out. But if I just lift the tire up a little bit, I can pull it out. So that means this is just barely touching. And that means this is the point at which I should make my measurement. I line it up so it's in the middle of the hub here, which you won't quite see from the angle of the camera, but that's the spot. And so right here, where this line comes down to the ramp is where I'm going to put my tape and base all my measurements from. So that's 26 and 11 sixteenths. Well, 11 sixteenths isn't very helpful, so I'm going to change that into decimals. And I get 26.69 inches of lift. Now, 26.69 divided by the sine of 20 gives me 78.03. The uh, wheelbase of this is 145.4. So we divide 78.0 by that. And we get 537 once I multiplied it by 1,000. So 537 is the flex index score for the new coil sprung Ford Raptor with 37 inch tires. But that is significantly less than the Ram 1500 TRX, which I believe was a little better than 600. Well, here it is, my leaderboard. And as you can see, the Ram 1500 TRX scored 602 points. Not the best we've ever seen. And certainly the, the Bronco two-door with Sasquatch and uh, disconnecting front stabilizer bar did better. And of course, the Land Cruiser with its KDSS did better. So where does this fit in? Well, it's going to be right here below. And I didn't even expect this. Below my own Forerunner with KDSS, 555, 537. So that is a lot of daylight to make up. But remember, we do have the 37 inch tires on here, which trim one inch of front and rear suspension travel in the name of clearance. So what I think I need to do, and I'm sure you'll agree, 
is get another Raptor with a 35 inch tire setup and see if it can eclipse or at least get close to the Ram 1500 TRX. Until next time, this is Dan Edmonds saying thanks for watching and also remember to like, subscribe, and please share with your friends because the YouTube algorithm hasn't quite found my channel yet. So word of mouth really helps. Anyway, I'll see you next time, hopefully, with a Raptor with 35-inch tires.